We are going to get into the Everything But the Kitchen Sink Awards right now, presented to you by DenverSportsBetting.com. The promotion of the year outside of the UFC goes to da -da 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 -da, one championship. Now, despite one championship hammering, hemorrhaging cash on paper, they have had a great product that they've diversified from their competitors in a unique way this last year. Now, how have they done that? Well, they've got some of the top young talent or some of the big names out there across the board in Muay Thai to submission grappling now underneath their umbrella in addition to their mixed martial arts brackets. Now, you have people in the Muay Thai world like Ra Tang, who has crossed over into the, uh, into the Western, uh, Western fighter realm, radar, whatever you want to say, after he had that mixed rules matchup with Mighty Mouse last spring where they had a round of Muay Thai, then a round of MMA. And it was going to alternate for four rounds if it would have lasted that long, but Mighty Mouse was able to get the finish in the second round. But... Being just the fact that they were willing to push the boundaries on what the status quo was and kind of just do their own thing or create their, their mixed rules spectacle that way. I like that they did that because that brought eyes to the product because you, you just thought, well, what if when you start thinking, okay, well, they got to change rule sets and so on and so forth. You know, and if Mighty Mouse can just withstand that first round, he can be able to get it done, you know, once it gets to MMA and he can use his takedowns, his wrestling. So but that that's exactly what played out. But you know, we we had the opportunity to be able to have that question answered because they were willing to go forth and do that. The uh they made the plans to come stateside also in twenty twenty three. So continuing to expand their pipeline and their reach, they're gonna have Mighty Mouse headline that card, the trilogy fight against Marais, which is smart. They also made that deal with Amazon Prime Video. They, uh, they they were bold enough to try to make another platform switch after the massive failure that happened with TNT. So the the perseverance in that sense can't help but uh, can't help but tip the cap from there. And like I say, in terms of uh, some of the eyes that. They're also bringing in. They're bringing in a lot of the the grappling world by having the viral sensations like the Rui Tolo brothers, Danielle Kelly, Mikey Musumishi. They're they're all competing underneath that one banner in submission grappling. So it's bringing a lot more eyes to their product as a whole. The comeback of the year in 2022 goes to Drew Dober against Terrence McKinney. That was uh, that was such a whirlwind of a fight. Terrence came out barrels blazing and had Drew hurt, had Drew in trouble. But Drew Dober is the model of perseverance over the course of these last couple of fights and has been able to uh, withstand the storm and come out on of it, come out of it on the other side with his hand raised with a TKO victory in his last three fights. So congrats, congratulations to Drew Dober. The UFC debut of the year goes to. Abus Magabedov, who had the 19-second annihilation of Dustin Stoltzis. Now, this was one that we came into the fight that we said, you know, if you've got a white guy that has Magomedov in his name, who is a, is a Muslim and speaks Arabic, yeah, that guy's a problem. That guy is a real problem, and as it turns out in the fight, was complete annihilation. That was that was something that made that guy seem like he's a boogeyman for the middleweight division that we are going to need to see more of in 2023. The rising prospect of the year is Jack Della Maddalena. Now, Jack Della Maddalena is a guy who got his UFC opportunity with a win over Angelusa on the Contender Series, he goes on to have three first-round finishes in the UFC over the course of the last year, all three of those coming by way of knockout. The fight of the year outside of the UFC was Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson against Adriano Marais 2. 
that was the fight with the finishing sequence where Demetrius Johnson clips him with the hands and then all the way r- continues to push the action up against the fence, hits the knee, and uh, it was the poetic justice, the, I guess, sweet revenge, if you will, by getting that knee finish after he got knocked out by Marais with the knee in the first fight. So, again, that trilogy is coming to the first bank center in Broomfield this spring so if that's something that you guys are interested in sinking your teeth into make sure that you keep your eyes peeled for more details on that fight the best celebration of the year goes to Hanato Moicano Hanato Moicano wants money that Moicano wants money interview was hilarious that was somebody who took advantage of the moment and was able to kind of birthed his own internet celebrity if you will he's gone on to a bunch of other podcasts now and he's just uh he's allowed his own platform to grow and elevate because he maximized those couple of moments on the microphone when the moment was right after a big win the non-mma combat sports athlete of the year we have the king we have gordon ryan If you take a look at what Gordon Ryan did this last year after returning to competition, being away for some time with his his well-known stomach issues, comes back this last year and just wrecked shop all across the board. You know, Gordon is so much better at the basics and the fundamentals of jiu-jitsu and submission grappling than everybody else. It's just, it's... It's insane. I mean, he's he's the king for a reason. He uh he is uh he's a guy who you okay, you want to try to pass, well he's gonna he's gonna leg lock you. You wanna sit back, he's gonna figure out a way to start attacking. There's there's just no part of the game that Gordon Ryan is not dangerous, and it's almost as if he has the mind and the wisdom of John Donaher, but he's still young and in his twenties in his prime condition, prime athletic competing condition, and is at times, like he did at ADCC, almost making it look easy. ADCC, ladies and gentlemen, for those who don't know, is the most coveted submission grappling tournament in the world. He goes out there, runs the table in the brackets, and then has after he wins the bracket wins his his bracket he goes on and has a super fight with Andre Galvao who is one of the greatest grapplers of all time undisputed not even close he is uh he, he goes out there and he submits Andre with the rear naked choke and just again it's uh his control his mastery of the technique and positions is just insane to watch it's literally watching someone like your michael jordan your tom brady your tiger woods whoever of the greats of the great in their prime that is what gordon ryan is doing right now in the grappling world he's on a 60 plus match winning streak which is unheard of so congratulations to gordon ryan stick around after the break folks we are going to be getting into our Colorado Awards segment of the show for the evening. This is the MMA Plug presented to you by DenverSportsBetting.com on 98.1 FM, Mile High Sports Radio. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like, share, and subscribe button that helps us continue to produce this original MMA content and bring it for you every single week. Tune in to the MMA Plug presented by DenverSportsBetting.com on 98.1 FM, Mile High Sports Radio on Wednesday nights from 6 to 7 p.m. Or live stream at DenverSportsBetting.com slash radio.